The eighth room of the dungeon is the ritual chamber, and it's behind a wooden door that's locked. It's one of those locks that locks itself once the door is closed, so even if someone is inside, it's going to lock no matter what. But the players uh, will have found the uh, key in the desk of drawers in the uh, room earlier, and with that they can open the door. This room is a small 10 by 10 room where there's not much else in there other than a corpse on the floor and its necklace lying beside it. If they look at the necklace, it's going to be very similar to the ones the goons had, except it's going to have more detail on it. Uh, besides the silver disc, there's going to be another silver disc embedded into it, making it look like a silver eye. And also, instead of having a string, it's going to have a silver chain. This is an arcane focus that belonged to the corpse on the floor. The corpse being a warlock or or a uh, kind of a cult leader type of character, but basically he was the brains behind this operation, and something has happened to where he and his goons have been turned into something else. And uh, that something else is soon going to become evident. The other creature in this room is an Alkalith. And now that's a demon from the uh, Mordenkainen books, and uh, we're going to change him up a little bit. But it's slumbering at the moment, Moment and in the wall, uh, completely uh, camouflaged and out of sight, so only with supernatural abilities can the uh, players really locate him. But he is... He is, like, uh, out of action right now. Uh, if the players come in and they uh, search around, if they take, especially if they take the arcane focus from the ground, the uh, body is going to reanimate. It's going to start bulging and uh, protruding and become uh, very grotesque and uh, horrifying. It's going to become a rudderkin, which is a demon from the Mordenkainen books as well. It's not uh, too tough, but it's one of those demons that has an ability that turns all its victims that have been reduced to zero hit points into a rudderkin themselves, so even other demons shun this creature. Uh, once the players have defeated the rudderkin, it's going to, its body is going to burst and it's going to melt into muck and pus and goo, and it's going to start out as a new creature, which is going to be an ochre jelly from the uh, basic. Uh, monster manual, and that being a large creature, it's going to take up the entire room, and it's going to have to squeeze around the uh, corridors when fighting the players, but that monster, again, is not going to be too hard for first-level players if they're if they're savvy, uh, and if, especially if there's enough of them. But once it dies, it's just going to die a, uh, a, a kind of miserable death of just melting and screeching in agony, but its death is going to wake the Alkilith. Now, the other way to wake the Alkilith is going to be by uh, wording out uh, or speaking out the words on the parchment paper that were inside the Book of Lore in the previous room, uh, Alkilith of Molor, behold my mortal flesh. That is going to wake the Alkilith up, and it's going to be a lot more passive and receptive to the player's um, uh, social interactions with it and all that sort of thing. It might have a lot of answers to them, though its purpose is not really to be a very individual um, free thinker. Uh, if the players kill this monster, the, they uh, they will wake the Alkilith up, and it's going to wake on its own, and and its uh, passive ability is going to activate. This passive ability is not in its uh, stats uh, in the Mordenkind books, but it's going to be that everyone in this cellar level, in this basement level, is going to have to make a, um, a wisdom saving throw with a difficulty of 18. And if they fail, they are charmed by the Alkilith. Uh, this charm just means that they are much more receptive and uh, passive to its uh, its purposes, which are not uh, malicious in the kind of uh, combat way, but simply to lull them into uh, being more receptive to the uh, principles and, uh, uh, pr uh, and proposals of its master or mistress, I should say, who is also the dead warlock's uh, patron.
Now, the Alkilith uh, is stationed uh, in the walls, and on the walls there is written with white chalk a uh, 10-foot-wide uh, archway, and this archway has within it a, uh, a hieroglyphic eye and a bunch of runes also drawn with, with uh, chalk that were clearly drawn in the parchment paper, and that's how the players can make the connection with the uh, wording in that parchment paper being applied here. Uh, but the Alkilith, like its nature describes, can open gateways to the abyss. And uh, it, it can uh, do so um, uh, in here as well. Its main purpose here is to open an archway to the abyss uh, so that the, um, uh, the uh, servants can directly speak with their master, their patron, on the other side. Uh, if the Alkilith was awakened through the belligerence of the players, it's going to cast uh, a mass hallucination spell that is going to make the walls seem like they're melting and there's zombie-like arms protruding out of them and kind of corral the players into the archway which is going to open into this kind of a dark corridor leading to a uh, room that is filled with mist and an angelic looking white glowing female figure standing there waiting and calling to them to uh, approach. If the players did mouth the words and uh, basically summoned the Alkilith to wake from its slumber, it's going to be a lot more um, uh, nice to them. It's going to instead use the kind of uh, mass hallucination to simply give a more pleasant effect. It's going to make the uh, cellar and the basement level and uh, also the archway it's going to open into a much more of an angelic and heavenly kind of a, kind of a thing and it will tell the players um, while it's speaking with them, um, that th if they have questions, if they have like uh, wisdom they wish uh, to be embarked upon them, uh, they should speak to the Celadon Queen, for she will bless you with knowledge. And that's the Alkalit's main uh, point here. He he is here to corral uh, servants to this. Um, to this uh, Celadon queen, this patron of the warlock, and uh, and also um, to um, to uh, work as a kind of a uh, a kind of a, a line of communication between them, uh, and uh, and it, it, once the players enter through the uh, archway, that's where we will continue on from. Then the um, Alkilith itself is not planning on being uh, violent and uh, combative in the kind of traditional sense because it's a monster who is way, way too powerful for first-level characters. So it's mostly a utility thing. The players can still, with great effort, run away from this place and leave it behind, but, uh, you know... D&D &D characters are kind of uh, cursed with that same thing that killed the cat, you know? So, <laughs> uh, onward to the archway and onward to the abyss we go.